some years ago, I was at a youth retreat where they had now, a one of the great questions that people God the Creator should be obvious by these gentlemen. If you were looking down or Jesus from high lines of God the Creator. Uh, a questioner has asked, I know God is sovereign, but do our prayers change God's will? Will all the people that God wants to be saved be saved? Answer, no. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Right? God does not will the death of the wicked. He takes no pleasure in it. And yet there are people who make choices to reject God's offer of mercy, and so they perish. When we think about prayer and the will of God, we recognize that God has a magnificent grasp of every detail in the universe. He actually knows everything. And that includes, he knows not only what will happen, he knows what could happen and the consequences of every action. So if you sit down at a chess board with an expert chess player, you can make any moves you want, but after a few moves he knows exactly how the game's going to end. If you make this move, he has an alternative move. He's going to win any way you play him. He gives you the freedom to take any move you want. But whatever way you move, he responds with moves that ultimately leads to his victory. When David went down and rescued the threshing floors of Keilah from the Philistines, Saul heard about it and said, this is wonderful. The Lord has delivered David into my hands. <laughs> Saul is lounging under a pomegranate tree in the furthest part of Gibeah. David is doing the kingly thing and rescuing these people from the enemy and Saul thinks this is a perfect opportunity to kill David. That's what jealousy does. It's cruel as the grave. And so he sends a hit squad down to kill David. And David finds out about it. And he goes to the Lord and he said, Lord, is this really true? I've been rescuing Saul's people and, and Saul's going to come and kill me? And the Lord says, I'm sorry, David. That's what he's going to do. And then he says, well, will the men of Keilah turn me over to Saul? Sorry, but yeah, they will. Now, the fact is that Saul didn't kill David, and the men of Keilah didn't turn David over. You know why? <laughs> because David didn't stick around. But if he had, God knew how that would have ended too. God knows all the possible permutations and all the consequences of those. And he knows how to take whatever option we choose and bring it to its best conclusion. So there are many things that were done that were obviously contrary specifically to the will of God, but ended up doing the will of God. It was not the will of God for Judas Iscariot to betray the Lord Jesus. It was the devil that moved into Judas and, and spurred him to do that. God does not solicit anyone to commit sin. So, Judas went ahead and did it. In spite of Jesus pleading with him not to do it, gave him the morsel of his eternal friendship. Said, are you really going to betray the Son of Man with a kiss? But when Judas did what he wanted to do, he sold Jesus to the Jews. Now, the Jews... They then handed him over to the Romans. Did Jesus manipulate the Jews so they would do this? So they would sell him? Uh, they would hand him over to the Romans? No. No, he pled with them. He wept over Jerusalem. He said, when you've lifted up the Son of Man, you'll know that I am. And they said, what are you talking about? He tried to warn them. They didn't listen. But when Judas did what he wanted... And when the Jews did what they wanted, and when Pilate did what he wanted, even though Jesus pled with him and said, the one who handed me over to you has committed the greater sin, the will of God was done. 
So this is the marvel of God. If you think of the sovereignty of God as God somehow micromanaging the universe so he gets his way, I'm not too impressed with that, to tell you the truth. I could do that. If I could push all the buttons and get everybody to do what I wanted, that's not very impressive. Here's what's impressive, is that God has given man a measure of freedom, and he allows the devil to do what he wants, and in the end, somehow God takes these things, these decisions, these bad decisions, and turns them for good, right? You meant it for evil, God meant it for good. So when we pray, we pray in the will of God. And we see over and over again how God demonstrates this. For example, uh, Moses is up on the mountain and God knows that the people are sitting down in the valley and he says to Moses, let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against this people. Get out of my way. I'm going to go down and destroy them and I'll start over with you. And Moses said, in effect, Lord, are you giving me a choice here? Well, no, I'm not going to move then. And he starts to preach the sermon of his life. He preaches to God and he says, you can't do this to your people. They're your people. They're not my people. I didn't bring them out of Egypt. And what will the Philistines say? You said you were going to bring them into, into the promised land. And so he pleads. He doesn't say, oh, God, if you just knew these people, they're really nice people. If you got to know them, they really deserve a second chance. He doesn't say that. He pleads the character of God to God. And then it says, and the Lord repented. He says, repent. Change your mind about the judgment that you're going to bring on your people. And it says the Lord did. Really? Whose will was done that day? Well, God's will was done. God wanted to spare his people. God was looking for an intercessor like Moses who felt like he did about those people down in the valley who would plead their case. Later on, he can't find anybody. In the book of Zechariah, he can't find anybody in the world that cares about the Jews. And he says, you know, the Jews don't deserve my help, but if nobody's going to help them, I'll come down and plead the case myself. We see this over and over again in Scripture, where God puts himself into the hands of men. Abraham, he says, I, I got ha- to tell Abraham, he's my friend, what's going to happen here with Sodom. And, and this is how he puts it. It's, a, it's obviously human speak. It's anthropomorphism. He says, I've heard how bad it is down there in Sodom. Um, I'm going to go down and check it out. Ten men, ten righteous men. I'd settle for any evidence of faith, any, any repentance. Any, I'll look anywhere and everywhere. In fact, if all I can find is one man and a few of his kids, I'll get them out of there, right? That's the heart of God. When Abraham starts to barter with God and says, wait a minute, if they're 50, if they're, you know, he works his way down, and then he stops at 10, and some people say, why didn't he keep going? As if, as if God was trying to hurry down there and destroy Sodom, and Abraham was, whoa, wait, 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 let's talk about, is that how it was happening? No. The reason God shared it with Abraham, because he said he's my friend. We think the same way about these things. God was looking for any hope down there. Maybe Abraham stopped at 10 because he thought, maybe if I get down far enough, maybe Lot himself isn't righteous enough to be rescued. Maybe I need to just cast myself on the mercy of God. But you know, the will of God was done that day. Abraham was thinking the way God thinks. This is the whole history of the Bible. When we come to the New Testament, God puts himself into the hands of men. He puts Jesus into the arms of a virgin. And as we look through the New Testament, we discover that worship, service, prayer are all God putting himself into our hands. You know, all the worship that goes to the Redeemer is in our hands to give it. God doesn't manufacture it. Angels can't do it. Only redeemed people can worship the Redeemer for his redemptive work. It's in our hands to do it. And that's what happens. The priests came with their hands full of the sacrifice. They offered it up. That's us. We have in our hands the worship of the Lord Jesus. What is service? You are Jesus' hands. He has no hands but your hands. If he wants to cook a meal for somebody, he's got to use your kitchen. You've got to do it. You've got to work with him in doing that. If he wants to pick up some little dirty kids for Sunday school that scuff up the car, you mean 
He says, I want these kids saved. And, and would you use your nice car to pick them up? I don't have a car. How about we work together on this? He puts himself into our hands to do it. And yes, in prayer, he puts himself into our hands. Ask my Father, and he will do it for you. So in James chapter 4, James makes it clear. He says, you have not because you ask not. Christians suffer loss in their lives, not because God is not willing to bless them, but because they are not willing simply to ask. So yes, God is not a vending machine. He's a real person. He has a will. He has a purpose for us. His will is far more comprehensive than we can imagine. I think, well, this is exactly the will of God. If I step off this way, I go into a detour, I take a wrong turn here, that messes up the whole thing. God says, well, if you take that side road, let me show you how I can get you back on the main road. If you want my will, you will never make an irrevocable mistake in the will of God. God is a lot bigger than that. So when we think about how prayer figures into the will of God, let's remember that prayer initiates with the Holy Spirit moving our hearts to pray and then adjusting our prayers to the will of God and then answering us exceeding above all we ask or think so that when the prayer is answered, nobody says, oh yeah, that's what I prayed for. I say, wow, Lord, I didn't even think to pray for that. <laughs> Look at what you did. And it rises up in thanksgiving and glory to God. So prayer is real. God has asked us to pray. We ought to pray in the will of God. The Spirit helps our prayers so that they're aligned with his will. And when we pray, it really does make a difference. However, when we pray, the will of God is done. God always accomplishes what he wants. It may be this way, it may be that way, but in the end, the will of God is done.